Hello, everyone, and welcome to our mock class today. My name is Kate Deering. I am a coordinator for recruitment and admissions here at Geese Online, and I look forward to spending the next hour with you. Our time today will be spent providing you with an opportunity to understand how live lectures are delivered in our 100% online programs. We offer three online master's degree programs, the IMBA, the IMSA, and the IMSM as well as two brand new graduate certificates in strategic leadership and management and also accounting data analytics. GEESE graduate level programs are innovative, affordable, and designed to be specifically online to offer a real flexibility and access for full-time working professionals. Today, you will experience a webinar from one of our talented faculty members and be able to get a glimpse into what kind of content is shared within GEESE. Our courses balance foundational material shared on the Coursera platform, as well as an interactive high engagement component. The high engagement component includes a live class each week and many other facets to learning like group projects, office hours, networking, and also being part of a great university like Illinois. Since we don't have time today to chat too much about the programs, I am going to share this QR code uh, included on this slide. If you would like to speak with myself or an admissions counselor to discuss your goals and, and whether or not this program is right for you, I would love to connect. Uh, just scan this QR code with your camera and it will give you a link to fill out a, a quick form. Before we get started though, um, learning about extending brands uh, to increase value with Professor Hayden Noel, I want to cover a few housekeeping items. I see some of you have your cameras turned on. Um, as Professor Noel says, the default is cameras on. Um, I encourage you all to turn your camera on to be able to interact just like you would in one of our live weekly classes. This really helps us engage during these classes and we really want to hear from you. Please note that you are all muted in order to minimize that background noise that you may have going on um, in your location. There may be moments, and I'm, I'm pretty sure this is going to happen, Professor Noel uh, will invite you to participate or call on you, and our technical team will unmute your microphone for you. If you have any questions, please use that raise hand feature and we will call on you. We will have one breakout session during our time today, which will allow you to participate with your fellow uh, session attendees. Um, and then lastly, we invite you to feel comfortable participating in the chat, um, and I will also be happy to answer any questions there. Now on to the good stuff. Our instructor for today's class is Professor Hayden Noel, Clinical Associate Pro Professor of Business Administration. Uh, Professor Hayden began his career at the University of Illinois in 2007, and in addition to teaching, uh, currently serves as an academic director for our online degree programs. He is actively engaged in research and his interests include consumer information processing and memory. His most recent publication, Self-Directed Learning Online, was awarded the Outstanding Article of the Year in the Journal of Marketing Education in 2021. Professor Noel has been on the list of professors ranked as excellent for 15 years and was named Executive MBA Program Professor of the Year in 2016. He received the Professional MBA Teaching Excellence Award in 2017 and was named IMBA Professor of the Year in 2018 and 19. And then finally, he earned his PhD in marketing from the University of Florida in 2002. We are so lucky to have him here today. Please join me in welcoming Professor Hayden Noel. Oh, thank you, Kate. Thank you. I was going to look for that person you were describing. I wonder who that was, <laughs> but thank you so much. Um, welcome. Great to see all your faces. Kate did all the hard work for me. Um, one of the things I always like, um, and someone wrote me an email saying, Professor, we're not in high school. We can turn our cameras off. Well, we actually do research on memory and cognition. One of the things we did research on was multitasking. There's no such thing. There's no such thing as being able to focus your attention equally and do as well as you could have on separate tasks if you try to divide your attention. I know I, I, I've been married, so I know how to listen to the last two words of a sentence to pretend I've been listening. But, I, you know, my wife still doesn't get my full attention, you know? I'm like, oh, what, your mom? Okay, great. 
I don't know what she said earlier. So I really appreciate it if I have your attention. And if you just turn on the camera, I can see what you don't know. I like to know when you don't grasp a concept, so I'm able to expound on it. So let's move on. Uh, let me share my camera. And I saw a couple of smiles when she said I went to University of Florida. Any Florida people here? Anyone associated with the Gators? Catherine, you're Florida. Where are you? Where in Florida are you? Sorry, I was having trouble unmuting. Um, I'm in St. Petersburg, Florida. Oh, okay, St. Pete. That's lovely. Lovely. Yeah. I like St. Pete. I've been there. I've been there several times. I've been there several times. Okay, let me get, let me share my screen. You know, one thing about me, I'm not very tech savvy, so I'm always kind of behind a little bit. Here we go. Um, can you see this? Yes, we can, Hayden. Oh, great. Great. Well, let me go. Okay, so today we'll talk about extending your brand, extending your brand. Um, usually I'm, I teach this after we talk about what a brand is and what a brand means, and that a brand is really, when you think of brand and the meaning of a brand, a brand gets its meaning from the associations, right? What you think about, what comes to mind when you when you, when the when you, you you talk or speak about the brand, right? So if I say something like Volvo, type in the chat. If I say Volvo, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Type in the chat. Let me see. Type in the chat. First thing that comes to mind, I say Volvo, that brand. Right, right, great, great cars, safety, reliability, safety safety vehicle luxury car all right a lot of you are saying safety and car right and car safety luxury car safety safe so that tells you that when we think of the brand equity of volvo they've built the equity on the concept of safety it's a good thing you didn't say old people because i owned a volvo for about 10 years so i was watching for that and remember my class is, is required so you will be in my class so be very careful very careful all right, safety, good. Um, so, so that's what branding is about. Establishing in the mind of consumer a, a bundle of associations that help you in terms of positioning in the consumer's mind, in terms of positioning your brand consumer's mind. So let's move on. What will we do today? Um, we'll talk about, uh-oh, uh I know what I did, the top global brands, evaluate, how to evaluate extensions, and then finally developing a brand extension. Now, let me see. I'm going to do this again in the chat. What do you think of the top four global brands? Type, type two of them. Type two of the top four. Two, just two in the chat. Just two. If anyone wants to put their hand up and take a try in front of everyone else, that's fine. Put your hand up if you can. Electronically. What are two, or, or you can tell me the top four global brands? I'm going to call on Miss St. Petersburg, Catherine. Catherine, what are the top four global brands? Talk to me. What do you think they are? Sorry, I'm still starting with the unmute, unmute button. Um, I'd say Apple, Google, um, Microsoft. Can anyone? What? You know what? The one that comes to mind most quickly, more than likely, is one of the top five brands. So what comes to mind quickly when you think of Big brands in the world, Apple, Google, what else? Let me let me get some help for you from Robert Palmer. Robert, give me two more. Oh, you're muted. Sorry. Thank you, Catherine. And Catherine, you're right, by the way. But we go. <laughs> Robert. Okay. Yeah, can you hear me? Two more. Yeah. Coca-Cola. Mm. I say is one. And um, what else? Maybe some like uh, Mercedes. Okay. I see you went for consumer goods, for physical goods. That's interesting. Interesting. I'll get one more person and then we'll end there. One more. Jun Wen Xia. Jun Wen. Give me one more. You're muted. Oh, I'm sorry. What if I call on you? You tend you're muted. Um, apologize. Jun Wen. Oh, me too. Meta, Meta. Meta. So Meta, what was Meta known as? Yeah, Meta. So Facebook and the, that, the, that group of companies. Okay, let us see. In 2021, the number four brand was Google. Microsoft, surprisingly, 
Microsoft is still one of the top brands. I know, right? You think they're dead? They're not. They're very well alive. The rumors of their demise are grossly exaggerated. Amazon, no one said Amazon. Did anyone think Amazon? Did they say it in the chat, Kate? Did they say it in the chat? Yep, I saw it. Right, right. Amazon, Brandon. Right, right. Excellent. Wendy. Okay. Wait, who is this? Roger. Roger, talk to me. Roger, did you sit in on my mock lecture last semester? Roger. Roger Alminar. You're muted. Hi. Roger, you are spot on. Apple, Google, Microsoft, and Amazon. Roger, why did you say those four? Why? Well, I guess because coming from the computer industry is probably easier to be global brand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and um, you realize none of these are consumer, really consumer packaged goods. Mm -hmm. they, they actually generate a lot of their value, as you say, from providing certain types of services that are computer related, right? Although Amazon is a vehicle for computer packaged goods, they make a lot of their, a lot of their value is derived from the other things that they do. Okay, Amazon provides some of the storage for some of the largest uh, companies in the U.S. and government um, facilities. So those are the top four. Let me ask you this. What's a number five? And we can see all of these are tech related, right? So consumer packaged goods. Coca-Cola 10 years ago used to be the number two brand in the world. Now Coca-Cola is down past 10. It's down in, in six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What's a number five? Anyone? Take a quick guess. Netflix, interesting. Netflix is actually losing value, especially after COVID. Meta, no. Meta is close, though. It's close. Meta lost a lot of value. Ah, ah, Omar. Omar is correct. The number five is Samsung. Number five is Samsung. Again, another company in the tech industry. Tech firms really have grown in value right? Growing in value. Maybe Netflix needs to change their business model. Uh, Netflix sells something, a product, streaming services. Maybe they need to do something else, okay? Who knows? Okay, so let's talk about these brands, because these are strong brands, and they have something in common. A lot of you thought about one or two of these brands. So it's clear to me that these brands have very strong brand equity. Right, Kathleen, are you with me? Guerrero, you're with me? I work with the Guerrero family. They all were great singers, all of them. Are you one of that, from that cut from that cloth, Kathleen? Where are you? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> the Guerrero singers, they all played, they all played musical instruments. Very sharp family, very oh, sharp. Cool. It's my I should get pictures team. and send them to you because they look like you too. I was, I'm like, wait, that's a Guerrero? Okay. <laughs> Okay, anyway, let's move on. Let's move on, Adam. You can try your pipes out later. All right. So why, what are the advantages of having strong brands? Um, first of all, let me go back. And I, I just focus because we really only have 45 minutes with you. So I'll focus on some of the strong, stronger points here. If you have a very strong brand, it leads to greater loyalty from your customers. And therefore, you're better able to fend off competition, right? When the competition arises, you're better able to fend it off, okay? There are so many other companies that have tried with Apple after the iPod was so successful to launch music storage devices, but the Apple loyalty was so strong. And also, they, they sucked you into their ecosystem, the Apple ecosystem, that they were able to fend off Microsoft and so many other brands with the portable music system. And you know, Apple was not the first company to develop that product, by the way. They weren't. Um, but Apple, when they developed their iPod and the portable music, they were able to fend off challenges. One other thing that uh, advantage of, of being a very strong brand is you're able to launch what are known as brand extensions, brand extensions. Um, we'll talk a bit more about what a brand extension is and the difference between brand and line extension in the coming slides, okay? So brand extensions. 
People launch, companies launch brand extensions in order to take advantage of the strong equity that they have. If your brand is, doesn't have very strong equities, more than likely an extension will not be successful. But for a very strong brand like Apple, uh, like um, like uh, uh, Google, mm, like even Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is a very strong brand, eh? right? Although um, I know people who are partial to Pepsi myself. But by the way, you know, in blind taste tests, people could not differentiate, more than 75% could not differentiate between Coke and Pepsi. So if you're a Coke lover and you can tell the difference, I bet you can't. I bet you can't. Don't, uh -uh, I see some of you shaking your heads. No, I bet you can't tell the difference between the two. Research has shown that that's the case. In blind taste tests, you cannot tell the difference between Hira, Pepsi, Wendy, I bet you in a blind taste test, you can't, right? I bet you. We'll try it. If you, if, you, if you join the program and you come to iConverge where we meet with our students, I'm going to have a, a blind taste test and I want Wendy Fumagali to be part of it, okay? Kate, Kate, take a note of her name. I want her to be there and I converge and we'll do this. All right. So companies can leverage their equity. They can use the brand equity. And remember what equity is, huh? Equity, we're talking about the associations that come to mind. Like I said, Volvo, you said safety. Some of you said car, but most of you said safety, right? Most of you said safety. So you can use that equity, the association that come to mind, and transfer that association to an extension, a new product. Now, I said brand extension, but there, there are two types of extensions, brand and a line extension, a brand and a line extension. I use them interchangeably sometimes, but they're not the same. They're different concepts. A brand extension is when a company has a, a new product, same brand name, but in a different category, in a different category. Let me show you an example. Nike, Nike is known for sporting wear and, 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 and products related to sport. Nike launched, really, perfume for women. Perfume, yes, Ryan Mitchell, perfume for women. All right. Could someone come up with an example that they could remember or think about of an extension where it's a brand, it's known for this category, it's, it's made, it's, the products are in a specific category, and it launches a completely different category. Anyone? Anything in the chat? Am I missing something? BMW? Well, yeah, okay. Apple, Apple, iPhones and routers, correct. Amazon Prime with video. Google launching the car, yes. Apple is playing around with the car too, Wendy. Apple is playing around with the car. I don't know what happened with that. Nintendo, talk to me, Stetson. Nintendo? Nintendo. Yeah, talk so yeah. Yeah, originally Nintendo was founded, I think, as a card playing game and then switched over to the electronic. Oh, I didn't know that. You see, I learn something new every day. That's why I like teaching this, these classes. Wonderful. It's interesting. Tesla. Amazon. Riv Wait, Rivian is not Amazon. I did not know that. Riv Rivian is an Amazon vehicle. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. 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 Uber car to Uber Eats. Well, Uber is in the field of transportation, right? I, I don't know if that's really, that might be more of a line extension. So that's a brand extension. Let's talk about a line extension. So about a line extension. A line extension when the company launches a new product in the same category. So think of your favorite soda, Coca-Cola, some of you, and then some of you say Pepsi all the way. Diet Coke, Diet Cherry Coke, Vanilla Coke, all of these are in the same category. Someone says Beyond Burger. Not, not, I don't think, I think it's the same. It's fast food, right? Fast food, it's just a different type of food, okay? So if McDonald got out of the, of selling food conveniently packaged and quickly served, because they really sell the convenience, but, if they get out of that and start selling McDonald's clothing 
or McDonald's cologne. Who, who wants to smell like some fries today, right? Okay, who knows? Might be you, right? That's, that's more of a brand extension. It's more of a brand extension. Okay, so these are line extensions, line extensions. That's the same category. Can you think of another line extension, anyone? Line extension. Let me hear you, Casey Forrester. A line extension. New product, same brand name in the same category. Whaley is correct. iPad mini, yes. Casey Forrester. Oh. Um, so at my company, um, Nerds is one of our brands, uh, Candy. And yeah. we just launched the Nerds Gummy Clusters last year. Right, so same candy category. Mm -hmm. Right, nerds. They were, I actually, they were my friends when I was growing up. I graduated high school at 16. So most of my friends were nerds. All right. So that was, a, that was my core group. My core, my core friend, my core friend group. I don't know. Uh, my friends are such nerds. There, there are some of my friends who have actually taken my class on Coursera. And then they tell me, I took your class, it was wonderful. Especially like the point you made on like, golly, let's just talk about cars or football or soccer or something. And they like to talk about my research. So yeah, nerds. But in your case, you're about the nerds candy, right? And then you move from that to gummy beers. That is a line extension. Yep. That is a line extension. Wow. North Face, Zoom user, whoever you are, what is, what North Face, what is there? What extension, line extension? ZU. Okay, I, I can't hear you, so we have to move on. Ah, Aaron Gale, Aaron Gale, you're correct. Reese's Peer Butter Cups, Reese's Thins, Reese's Minis. Exactly. Line extension, same category. You folks get it. You folks, Tesla, sedan, and truck. Yes. Right? Launching extensions does provide an advantage. You do have advantages when you launch extensions. First of all, you get increased sales. You get more money. Mm -hmm. You expand the 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 um the notoriety, the brand value is increased, right? The brand becomes more well known. But there are disadvantages to brand and line extensions. Could someone tell me one disadvantage of launching an extension? Launching a brand or line extension. What could be a risk involved? Kind of like, ay, 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 Laurie Coyle. Laurie Coyle. You got the coil, Laurie, exactly. And Robert Palmer talks about it. Kathleen, you're correct. It might fail. So that means, as Robert Palmer says, there's risk to your brand name. You could potentially dilute the brand. You could potentially dilute the brand. There's risk of brand dilution. All right. Um, and what's brand dilution? Think of the lemonade you buy from those kids on a hot summer day in the USA on the street, and it's very watered down. That's diluted lemonade. That's what happens to the brand. The brand loses its strength. Brand loses its strength. So you risk, as Laurie calls it, as capitalization, where you can actually lose sales. Sales are taken away from your parent brand product, whatever the branded product is. And people start buying, for example, Coke. They start buying Diet Coke instead. That's cannibalization. Then they would have bought the Coke. Cannibalization could be good in some instances, though. Could someone tell me when cannibalization might be a good thing? When do you think cannibalization, sales being taken away, like Coke launching Diet Coke or Coke launching uh, Coke Zero, when is cannibalization a good thing? Lose if uh, if they become uh, wait wait Eric you said you said new entrance to the market what do you mean Eric yeah somebody maybe wasn't maybe they would drink Coke every so often but they really wanted a diet Coke so therefore they'd buy more diet Coke yes a customer but and I got and and let's say Pepsi was going to launch a diet Coke hmm. Then in order not to lose those customers to a diet Pepsi, sorry, Pepsi can't launch Diet Coke because Pepsi is better than Coke. So anyway, let's Pepsi is going to launch a diet Pepsi. Hmm? You are preempting loss of sales by launching your um, diet 
soda product. So that's called preemptive cannibalization. Good catch, Eric. Good catch. How do you pronounce your last name? Kanoff. Kanoff. It, it, it's Kanoff. unique. The K is not, it's what you said? It's just like Kani and Kanice. It's, it's simple. Kani. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I had Kani surgery the other day. It was okay. Yeah, the K isn't silent. That's okay. That's pretty Kanit. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> That's what, I like this class, Kate. They laugh at my corny dad jokes. My kids don't. My kids tell me I'm so corny. They don't even want, they listen to me talking sometimes. I wonder why students laugh. Say because I give them their grade. Anyway, let's move on. Let's move on. So we're talking about brand extensions. A brand extension, the chance of success for brand extension, the chance of success are enhanced. When the, when the associations from the brand transfer very easily to the extension. For instance, if you have Volvo and you're making a, another type of product or service that deals with safety and you can transfer safety very easily, yes, that will work. Now let's look at an example. Let's look at an example. Um, and research has been done that shows this, that people react more positively when the associations fit, when they transfer easily. Look at this, Clorox, making Clorox disinfecting wipes. That's easy transfer, right? Disinfecting wipes deal with what? Jamie Larson, cleanliness. And Clorox is a brand known for cleanliness. But not so easy, Clorox making orange juice. If Clorox made orange juice, there's no ease of transfer there, right? It can transfer very easily, okay? But again, Clorox disinfecting wipes, that would transfer. Clorox disinfecting wipes, that would transfer for Clorox. Clorox orange juice, not so much. There's no ease of transfer cleanliness. No one wants clean orange juice, okay? No one's clean orange juice. Now, how do you evaluate brand extensions? And right after we do this, we are going to actually jump into a breakout room in about um, three minutes. How long is a breakout room, Kate? Um, I think we're gonna do probably like eight, eight-ish, eight to 10. Eight, eight minutes, eight yeah. minutes. Okay, good. So let's talk about this framework that I teach my students uh, to use when evaluating extensions. It's called the flow framework. What does flow stand for? No, it has nothing to do with insurance. Please, nothing to do with insurance. All right, Jesus knows that one. It's not about insurance here. The flow framework talks about fit, leverage, and opportunity of the brand extension. The fit, leverage, opportunity. When we talk about fit, we're referring to do the associations transfer? Is the brand a logical fit? Does it stretch? Does it transfer over from the brand to the extension? That's fit. So Duracell, Duracell actually started making uh, Duracell flashlights. Is there fit there with flashlights? What association from Duracell transfers to flashlight? Hira Umer. Hira, do you know the brand Duracell? Do you know Duracell, Hira? Yes? Hira. Yes. Do you know the brand Duracell? Yes. What, what association, what element can you transfer from the Duracell brand to a like flashlight? Power. Power. Yeah. Power. Great. Great. Power. What else? What else? Anyone else wants to tell me? Long lasting. So, Roger, it's it's long lasting, it's reliable. Well, the complementarity is what you transfer, right? You hope they use Duracell batteries, but you're transferring what the brand Duracell stands for. That's what you're transferring. The elements, the equity of the brand. What does it stand for? What comes to mind when you think of Duracell besides batteries? You think of durability, think of quality, think of longevity, right? And those apply, those transfer, I think, I believe they transfer very well to flashlights. Duracell also thought about making cameras. I, um, I wasn't sure. Could anyone convince me that there's fit here? What transfers? Kathleen Guerrero, do you think there's fit there? I 
think so. I think it's enough. What fit? Tell me the word, the quality, the, the not quality, I said quality, but quality, my transfer, quality. But what else? Does anything else transfer from yourself? Who wants, I mean, long lasting, maybe? Long lasting battery and it's a reliable brand. No, well, not long lasting battery, the long lasting camera. The camera is what you're thinking about. Yeah, right? I mean, yeah, I see, I hear what you're saying. It might be a little bit off because it's, a totally different realm for them but yeah um, i could i could look into buying it because if there's a battery in the camera it would last long and it's a well-known name um, right right made out of durable materials because I, I think product. that idea of durability and reliability would yeah. be good but ahmed they don't have to have experience in optics they hire a company they use their brand right by hiring a company to make it okay their brand is what helps them not the not the expertise in making it right apple didn't have any expertise in making wearables yet still we all not we all a lot of us including me have apple watches because of the apple brand they transferred um, uh, consumer ease of use and consumer friendliness and so on they transferred those things quality to the apple the apple watch right so um Quality, reliability, perhaps. I think it's a bit of a stretch. <laughs> a stretch, no pun intended. But, but, yeah, but, 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 Ahmed, Ahmed, Apple is not an electronics company per se, right? They make a limited set of electronics, but they don't make amplifiers. They don't make electric guitars. They don't, I mean, they, they, they don't, they're not, it's not electronics. I don't think that's what they're, Brand is. When I think of Apple, I don't think of electronics. I immediately think of um, quality. I think of ease of use. I think of consumer access. I, th I think of those types of things rather than just electronics and electronics brand, right? But I, all right. Ah, I like that though, but I never use my watch as a phone. I haven't used it as a phone yet. I, I don't know. It's interesting. I see, I, but perhaps um, elastic brands. And let's get to this elastic brands. And I like that. I like that. I like that though. Um, who said Wendy? I like that about the phone, the extension of the phone. I like that. I have to think about that. Elastic brands are able to really stretch because they're positioned solely based on quality. Ah, Lori Coil. Yes, I like this. A Duracell smoke detector. Because you know it's going to last long. Your house wouldn't, and you can show them the house burnt down. The house, you should have gotten the Duracell, right? The smoke detector. Oh, wow. Lori, let's write that commercial together. Okay. So if it's position quality, you're able to transfer quality to multiple um, categories. So there's much more of a stretch. It's much more stretchable. It's more elastic. Think of Ralph Lauren. Raffler makes so many different products. They they make paint, they make um, home way, they make uh, home goods, um, they make dishes. You can buy a Raffler and coffee coffee cup and plate for eighteen dollars, right? You want it? It's much more expensive than the coffee, I know, but you can buy it. Clorox though is a, not an elastic brand because a brand like Clorox is known as a, a functional brand. It's position and functional attributes, cleanliness, and so on. So it's, it can't stretch to everything. Ralph Lauren, you can use, make, um, sell Ralph Lauren paint because it's quality paint. Clorox, you'll have to stick to categories where cleanliness would matter. You can't go to every category. You can sell Ralph Lauren water. You know there, you bottle water, you go into to those Harrods in, in England and buy the water for 14 pounds or 10 pounds in the bottle. Ralph Lauren could do the same, but Clorox cannot. They have to stick to categories where cleanliness matter. So that's fit, fit. Do associations transfer, leverage. Even if they transfer, does it give you an advantage, right? So Apple, let's say Apple, for instance, Apple making an Apple car. Ease of use might transfer, right? Quality could transfer and so on. But how many people buy a car simply because it's easy to use. Oh, I want that car. That's the most 
easy to use car in the world. I am going to buy it. I'm not sure. Does ease of use give you an advantage, an edge in the automobile category? Uh, let me hear you. Yes or no, Stetson. Stetson says no. So leverage means what associations, the association you transfer give you an edge in the new category. Finally, opportunity. The associations transfer. The ones that transfer, one of them or two of them give you a distinct advantage when it comes to the target market. And finally, there is a large enough target market to generate sales. There's a large enough target market to generate sales. Fit leverage opportunity. Associations transfer, they give you an advantage and you can have sales. There's people, there are people out there who will buy it. Let's look at these extensions and then you get to create your own extension in about a minute. Perfume made by the company known for light as Zippo. Zippo made perfume. Is there fit there? Uh, does it fit? Let me hear you, Catherine. Catherine says no. Type in the chat, please. Is there fit with Zippo perfume? Smell like gas. <laughs> Catherine, no, not really. Okay, no fit. So if there's no fit, Catherine, you know what? We don't need to continue. Because remember, the steps are fit, then leverage, and then it will there be people who will buy it. opportunity. Okay, let's move on. What about Bud, White, Bud Light making Bud Light Seltzer? Bud Light Seltzer. Fit? Yep. Crisp, crisp, tasty, right? Right, so the associations are transferred. Finally, Samsonite making Samsonite jackets and outerwear. Is there fit? What transfers? Quickly. Marcelo, does this work? A, a suitcase manufacturer, luggage manufacturer making clothing, outerwear? Marcelo, you're muted. Yes? What transfers here? Can someone type in the chat? What transfers here? What transfers? Travel? Yeah. Ah, Ryan Mitchell. Look what Ryan said. Durable and weatherproof. Great. Robust, durable. Yes. Yes. That's great. That's great. I like that. What about Guinness? Guinness Blonde. Guinness made Guinness Blonde. Does that, what transfers? What transfers here? Just don't say yes. Give me some that transfers. Anything transfers? Quality taste. Quality. Okay. Deliciousness. Okay. Wonderful. Bra no, 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 no. Robert Palmer, brand loyalty doesn't transfer. Brand loyalty, we're talking about the elements. The attributes, the, the different associations of the of the brand. That's what makes up brand loyalty. That's what leads to brand loyalty, right? No, but the type of beer, the category is not the transfer. The transfer is what associations that, that relate to the brand that transfer, and not like the category and so on. Things that 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 make it a good brand, right? Okay. Now we're going to put you into groups and you have about eight minutes and you'll come back. I want you to quick, oh, wait, wait, let me go back. You're gonna get this in the chat. Gonna get this in the chat. Think of an extension, come up with one. It should not exist. And think of why this extension will be successful using fit, leverage, and opportunity. Don't go into much depth. Fit, fit simply means List the associations that transfer. That's all you have to do. These associations transfer. Leverage. This one association that transfers will give you an advantage. This one association, that's leverage. Opportunity, this will be bought by businessmen and women, leaders all around the world, but especially in North America. Well, whatever. I'm just making that up. Okay, opportunity, who will buy? Fit, which associations transfer? Leverage, you list them. Which one association gives you an advantage in that category, the new category? And find out who will buy. Not a line extension, a brand extension, new category. See you soon. Wow. wow. You folks are learning anything, Kathleen Guerrero? You learning anything today? Is there anything that 
Yeah, absolutely. The class has been wonderful so far. Great, um, great. Yeah. <laughs> In our breakout group, we were discussing Mozilla Firefox and yeah. came up with a couple of different ideas for a brand extension. Okay. Um, we were talking about, you know, like a video editing sort of video I editing think. software yes yes video that's interesting software. yeah <laughs> that's a completely different type of okay uh, but why what transfers uh we were thinking that mozilla is known for being like a clean web browser for having less errors and and things like that and then our ah! <laughs> yeah we struggled to come up with something but that's greater we... reliability and so on yeah yeah what about a Mozilla router with built-in oh. um, safety features, right? Because uh, people could, people drive by a house and tap into your router. Yeah. You know, they do that and then they get your information. Yeah. The other idea we had was antivirus software. So yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Router is a whole different category too. Okay, great, great, great. I like that. Um, let's hear from uh, one of the Lipton groups. I heard the Lipton groups. Um, let's hear from, um, who thinks that Lipton product is great? Okay. Okay. We got one Hira, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So we, our group was discussing how like the association that would, we would use to transfer would be the energy and we mm -hmm. would turn it into a bar where like, um, like an energy bar. Yeah. Um, what else transfers besides energy to a bar? What else could you transfer? Taste. Taste because Lipton is tasty and refreshing. Yes. And then would, would any of those give you an advantage in the energy bar category? Hira. Yes. Which one? What would what, what was which one of those associations would give you leverage? Which one? The taste. Taste, yeah. Yeah. I eat many energy bars. Yeah. I have had about one in the last year that was tasty. I'm telling you. They ain't tasty, Hira. They are not. <laughs> so I would buy a tasty Lipton energy taste bar yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, good, good. Who would buy it? Well, we know who, but just tell me for arguments. So I mean, obviously tea drinkers, but then it wouldn't be like, a, it's, more, it's a milder taste. So yeah. then just for like, you know, I want to get through the next hour or the next class or something, not. Yes. We're not trying to stay up the entire night. Type of wow, stuff. wow. So I like that fit. Which associations transfer? Energy, refreshing, taste. Taste is the one that you're banking on yeah. to, That's right? Thing. Yeah. Get the energy that doesn't taste like cardboard. Lipton Energy Bar. Ah, I like that. I would buy that. I'd buy that. Why give up taste just to get energy? Buy Lipton Energy Bar. That's a, that's a winner right there. Okay, there's not a winner. That's a winner right there. I like that one. Let's end the class. We're done. That's the best one I've heard. No, <laughs> sorry. That's wait, wait. Someone put their hand up. Ryan. Ryan, what's your group? Oh, that's your group? No, I was saying drop the mic. But and go no. away. Let's done. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> let's, let's end this. No, they All had right. a better lifting concept than we did. We had a bar too, but it was more about convenience and portability. But um that's what you transferred convenience and portability well lipton isn't about convenience and portability though right when i think of lipton i don't those aren't the associations that come to mind for me i would think of other things but yeah um we're going to take one from bose who had the best bose extension and one where associations transferred and you had great leverage who was it Come on, put your hand up. Thank you so much, Hira. All right, let me hear from you, Jordan Taylor. Hello. So we came Hello. up with, with two ideas. One. Just give me one. We just need one, Jordan Taylor. Okay, virtual reality goggles and speakers to compete with Oculus. Okay. What transfers? The functionality of the sound functionality. Card. What else? Sound quality. Quality sound. What else? Anything else? Reliability. Reliability. Which of those would give you an edge in the VR category? Quality. Sound quality. Sound quality. Yeah, because one thing is with VR, 
you are surrounded by imagery, right? But no one, you know, thinks about the high quality sound in that environment. I haven't seen, you know what I mean, where it's surround sound and high quality, especially if it's built into the goggles. I like that. I like that, right? That's a close second. You're running a close, close second to that Lipton energy bar right there, neck and neck. I don't know who will win. It's like the 100 meters at the World Championships in Eugene, Oregon. Well, that wasn't close, but anyway. All right, thank you. Now let's hear one, and we have to end after this, I'm sorry, from, what was the other one? Mozilla Firefox. We had Mozilla, we had Lipton, and we had Bose. All right. We've done them all, Hayden. I just want to get one. Anyone has one quick one that was better than these? Come on. Let me hear you, please. Put your hand up. Do not be shy. You're all leaders at your company and so on. You're running things. You supervise people and you're shy? Come on, man. Let me hear. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to hear from you, one of you. Jamie Larson. Jamie, uh, you have to get, don't, don't act like me, Jamie. <laughs> when they say put up your hand, you do it electronically. I don't I know how to figure use out this. how to do that. Me, I couldn't Jamie, find the button. So me neither. Like, um, me neither. We didn't know we were assigned specific brands, so we just came up with our own, and I liked our idea. It was really cute. So we're taking Lazy Boy um, for the chairs and doing a line of pajamas, comfy pajamas, and transferring over the comfort aspect for people. Comfort. Comfort. Okay, and and comfortable pajamas would help, right? Do you look like a chair though? Is it like leather, a leather look? No, no, no. But but I like that comfort. Okay, okay, great, great, great. All right, let me. I like this. Let me go back to these slides and wrap this up. Wrap this puppy up here. So we spoke about these Lipton, Bose, and Firefox. And what did we do today? We talked about branding and the fact that a bunch of about. Um, a brand, we're talking about the equity in the brand, the associations that come to mind when you think of the brand. And then we also talk about um, one of the benefits of having a strong brand is that you can create brand extensions or line extensions. And we gave you a framework to evaluate these extensions, fit, leverage, opportunity, fit, which associations from the brand transfer, leverage, which one or two of these associations give you an advantage in the new category, opportunity, is there a target audience who would purchase this product or service? This is great. So let me hand you over to Kate and then I'll come back to wrap up. Um, Professor Hayden, do you wanna take a couple of questions? Yeah, any questions, any questions? We have time just for a, a couple of quick questions. If you guys can raise your hand, that would be great. And if you raise it physically, we'd find you too. <laughs> okay, Jordan Taylor. Jordan Hi, yes. Taylor, yes. For the L leverage, how do you discern which characteristic of the brand is the one to leverage or the best the association? One, to one of two ways you do you conduct research to see of the brands out there what they're missing and compare that with the associations that your brand can generate. And then you also ask consumers. How important are these different associations when purchasing in this category? So it's based conducting market research, right? Um, now we're doing it very intuitively, but all of this takes months to sometimes years to do, right? <laughs> um, it's not, Coke Zero didn't happen in a 10 minute breakout room. Okay, it took a long, long time, but um, market research, collect the data. That's a great question, Jordan, great question. Anything else? Anything? Robert? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, maybe kind of a similar answer to what you just answered, but how does a company typically decide when to use their own name for the new product or possibly use a brand new name for the new product? Ah. New well, well, the thing is, when you use a brand new name, you actually lose the opportunity to leverage your own equity. And um, educating a consumer about the benefits of a new brand is much more costly and takes much longer. What companies do instead of launching an entirely new brand, most times they might acquire a brand that has the benefits they're looking for, the associations are looking for to have, um, to take up space in a specific category that they believe is complementary to theirs, all right? So if there's complementarity, but 
launching a new brand if you have if you're a well-established brand is much more expensive and more risky so most companies shy away from that right yeah. so all right one more question larry dudley coca yeah so um my question is the uh, flow framework yes but we apply only to branding and marketing yes um hmm. you know what now, i don't know I learned it in that sphere, but I think you might be able to use it in other spheres too. I have to think about that. That's a very good question. It's an excellent question. And one thing you know about me, I do know a lot about marketing. I've worked in marketing. I, I'm almost 60. I worked in marketing for almost 20 years before I did my PhD. Um, and But I'm not af afraid to say I don't know. I, I don't know about this one. I will look into it because it's an excellent question. Sorry. Thank you. Oh. All right. So that's it. Let me, wow, that's, that's wonderful. Kate, yes. Kate, let I, them all in. Let them all in. I like this group. Let them all uh, in. Will do. Um, yes, excellent questions. Thank you so much, Professor Noel. We really appreciate all of your excellent insights today. I hope everyone enjoyed this live class experience, which really is just like one of our live classes that we would have um, in our program. So thank you to all of our participants today for attending this mock lecture and bringing some really great questions and comments too. That chat was, was great tonight. We hope you gained um, some valuable knowledge and are inspired to submit your application soon. The next deadline line is September 8th for the final October start and applications are also now open for spring 2023. Um, we also would like to offer you guys a application fee waiver for October applicants. Um, I will follow up with an email with to all of you in attendance today but that code is join geese August and that should be on your slide right now um, and that would be for these October um, and October start. I am now going to throw it right back to Professor Noel for some parting words, but thank you all for, for being here today. All right, Kate, I was going to ask, can they share that code? Someone messaged me privately, but I think they're going to post the question in the chat. You know, if for an October applicant, sure, they can go ahead and use that code or reach out to me and I'm happy to help. They can share it. Okay, great, great. So if you know a friend who's as talented as you are, as engaged as you are, and intelligent as you are, I know it's a high bar. Um, please bring them along. I really like smart people in my class. All right. Um, hey, I just want to thank you all for being here. As, as Kate said, this is what our expectations are with students. We really don't expect students just to sit and be lectured to. This is not what the University of Illinois is about. It's about engagement. It's about learning from you. I learned from you today as well as engaging and hoping you learn from us. And even if you're a marketing executive, if you are, have so much experience, we teach you frameworks and concepts that give you the language of marketing that you might not have known. I worked in advertising. I worked on the Milk Mustache campaign and the people on that campaign had no idea about some of the site theory that made the campaign successful. So taking a class like this, when we talk about consumer behavior, you would know why certain things you do make sense and why they're successful, even if you have that marketing knowledge and experience. Hey, so thank you all. I just want to say one thing to you. I want you to do one thing that will enhance your chances of success if you join the program, all right? Or in your career, read a new book. You know, I have all these wonderful books. Nudge, Nudge is a great book, N-U-D-G-E, Nudge. It's a wonderful book. I like consumer psychology, all right? So um, connect with each other on LinkedIn. Connect with us on LinkedIn right? Um, you can connect with me if you wish and ask questions about the program. I'll be happy to answer them. Do one thing that will enhance your chances of success. Do it today. And on that note, I'd like to tell you all, I want each and every one of you, right? Hira, John Wen, Andy, Jill, Stetson, Santosh, Wendy, Catherine, Jesus, Lori Coyle. I want each and every one of you, Marcelo, to go out into the world and be successful. Ciao. See you, Casey Forrester. See you, Jamie Larson. Goodbye, Kate Daring and Kathleen Guerrero. Have a great evening. <laughs>